Welcome to the Is It Change Corden episode 9. We are back joining you live from the set. We have got the big man Jesse Smith. He's finally, finally made it out. Like Sue's, Sue's <laughs> the mum. She's made it. She's, 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 uh, she's clutched up and Dee's will be joining us live. And we have got a massive show in store for you today because today we've got the man, the myth, the legend, Bev. He will be coming on to the show and uh, will be joining us very, very shortly. Uh, and we're, just a word from our sponsors, Great Australian Squeeze and Rexona. If you haven't, uh, they haven't reached out to us yet. In Kirk's uh, as well. I'm sure they will. And uh, yeah, Kirk's. Uh, yeah, get around them. So, straight into it, eh? Yeah. Uh, before we uh, get Bev on, we're going to start, a, start talking about finals. Yeah. Obviously, Plunkett made his finals uh, predictions video yesterday. If you haven't watched that already, go watch that. Link will be in bio. We'll and. Um, but me and Dee's better say our opinions. Start yeah, with you. I'm not sticking with Plunkett's opinions on the finals. Oh, Tonight's oh. probably a ver- the game of the round, I'd say, of the first week. Port versus Geelong. I'm seeing Port are getting up with the home ground advantage. Both teams have just stacked lists, not many injuries, so it's going to be a cracker. Yeah, I don't know about this one. I'm going to put my money on, yeah, I'll probably go Port as well. Yeah. Um, home ground, it'll be absolute scenes at the Adelaide Oval. And something about Port this year... Um, the media still don't believe in them, but um, they're a cracking chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and as you as you'll have to find out who I tipped uh, if you watch the video in the link in the description. Uh, next up, West Coast Collingwood. Yeah, this game. I'm actually going with Collingwood here. <laughs> Plunk it. I'm going with Collingwood as well. <laughs> I called what? this before. You did. It's a big call. It's yeah. a massive call. Me and me, we. It's such a big call, it's probably in Plunkett's video, which is a link in the description. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is outrageous. How do you... Okay, my it? opinion, my, my thought process through this, I've been watching West Coast for like the last five, five odd rounds, maybe even a bit before that. They have not been blowing out teams. They've been playing average footy. Their goal kicking has saved them in all those games, pretty much. Um, their midfield hasn't been up to scratch. Um... Although it looks so good on paper. And I really don't think they'll get enough inside 50s to beat Collingwood. And I feel like that scrappy play in finals um, will work. Yeah, it's true. They've got a lot of changes this week also. Some good ins, but I reckon the amount of changes will take a while to get the chemistry going. And, you know, it's finals. It's time for an upset. Jeez, jeez, that is a... That is a massive, massive call. I reckon it's it's a good call. Alright, well, you can think that. Next game... uh, Richmond... Richmond and Brisbane at the Gabba Friday night spectacle. Yeah, that's going to be an absolute uh, cracker of a game. Up at the Gabba, I'm putting my money on the Brisbane Lions. Is he? Mm. I'm so going I'm, against I'm, you here. I, I think that it's about time they won. Yeah, it's it about is time. about that, that's, that's my only thought process. At home, it's about time they've won. And I think they'll be up and about. In front of a home crowd. Yeah, so... Oh! That's we've just we've just got a uh, we've just got the the message from the great man himself. He'll be on very very shortly, and uh, the final game. I think. Uh, oh, what think was your thought on that? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Tiggs Tiggs will get up. They've just got too much class at the end of the day. Yeah, probably not a bad shit. Yeah, and the final game of the round. It's the big game with the, the game we've all been waiting for. The game <laughs> I've been waiting for for so so very long. Now um, let's hear our opinions on that. <laughs> yeah, and I think the Dogs will win, and I think they'll win big. And I reckon their midfield will absolutely dominate. I reckon Norton will kick 12... No, I'm just kidding. But I do think the Doggies will win by... It'll be a very close game, I reckon, within a goal or two. Um, I think the Bulldogs outside class with McRae and Hunter and all that will just get them in the end. Um, Jeez, all Saints, right. have, Saints have had a good season, but first, first year in finals... Yeah, um, that is my biggest fear. Going to be a fear. bit of noobs. My um, biggest fear is the uh, lack of finals experience. But we've brought in a lot of uh, a lot of finals experienced win in the trade period with Premiership players such as Hanbury and Hill. I reckon we'll get them over the line. Uh, yeah. Sure, I hope so because I, I just, want to be up and about. I reckon Saints have just been slightly underperforming, to be honest, the last five or so weeks. Jeez. Uh, 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 I swear. 52 point I mean, against the Giants. I mean, it was, it was close <laughs> until the last quarter when Giants had pretty much given up hope. But, like, apart from that, they haven't quite been hitting the straps, so... I reckon I reckon the big, um, the big like, turning point is if ben, um, Max King plays well. That is a good if point. If Max King he... kicks more than two goals, I reckon the Saints win. And Dan and Butler. So if Dan good. Butler kicks more than two goals, you can almost... You can almost uh, give them the win from there. <laughs> it's going to be a cracking game either way. Yeah, uh, so a big week in finals to come up. 
Uh, yeah, stay tuned. All right, so the next thing um, we got here, we haven't got the round highlights or the poor form tribunal due to there being no footy this week. So we're going to get straight into some questions um, that we got on our Instagram uh, from yesterday. If you haven't already, uh, follow the Instagram at the Interchange Cordon. Link in the description, you'll find out where to follow that one. Yeah, and so let's have a look at a few of these questions. First of all, Harry Sheehan. Um, how are you going, Chase? How are you going? I'm just, I'm just sending Bev the link if, you, if I'm a bit caught. And then, so he asked, what's all your favourite sports? Now, I'll start with Plunkett here. What's your favourite sport? Oh, well, I mean, it's hard to go fast footy. Uh, you live and breathe it in the winter months. If you, did, if you didn't know us, we're big footy and cricketers. So uh, but yeah, we... summer, it's, it's a bit footy in the winter, summer in the... Foot, summer. <laughs> <laughs> cricket in the summer. But I, I, I actually reckon footy has the upper hand over cricket just because it's such yeah. a passion amongst yeah. us uh, Victorians. Especially yeah. just the, the footy season watching footy. There's something yeah. special about that compared I reckon, to cricket. Yeah. Watching footy is definitely um, ahead for me. It's got the edge. Um, but playing cricket, playing cricket all day on a Saturday, it's hard to beat, um, especially in the summer. Yeah. So the culture around the cricket, it's kind of up yeah. in the end. You got to have a balance. Yeah. Uh, also, Harry's brother, Lockie, uh, next year's premiers. St Kilda. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, St Kilda gonna win the flag. We're it's gonna, gonna be cool, crowds are gonna be crowds are gonna be back. The Saints faithful will be up and about. We're just giving them a tease as to uh, what the what what's gonna look like in the end. Um, but yeah, who Lock who's winning the Premiership next year? Jeez, probably. I'm making a bold call. The Frio Dolphins <laughs> will win the 2021 <laughs> Premiership. Jesse Hogan to keep Mark it my, oh my Mark my words. Oh my giddy arms. <laughs> um, boy, where are we? Cam McCarthy to come back and kick seven snags in the grand final. Ross the Butch. Ross, Ross the Butch Ross. to Mark come out of retirement yeah. and touch the jockers. Oh, jeez. Let's hope that doesn't happen. I mean, none of your calls are better than mine, to be honest, because I think the Melbourne Football Club <laughs> will get the job done. And look, it's biased, it's heavily biased, but if I don't believe, who's going to believe? So. Realistically, it's probably Brisbane or Richmond or Geelong or yeah, but the usual. No one cares. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one cares about next year. We're going to focus on this year first, and uh, hopefully we actually make it to the end of 2020 and get uh, hopefully COVID's done by then too. So, and now our last question that we're going to read out today is from Jack R uh, underscore seven. Jack Rees. Um, were any of you you blokes alive the last time Essendon won a <laughs> final? Now I know about this one because I was born 2004, 16 years old. I was born in se on September 19th, which was, I think, about two weeks before, um, after Essendon won their first <laughs> final. As an Essendon supporter, I've not been alive um, to see us win a final. Well, uh, yeah, um, if I didn't know whether they won the final <laughs> in 2004, but I know now, and I was actually alive, I remember it fondly, uh, <laughs> uh, at my uh, thriving age of uh, seven months, I was, I was up and about. Uh, yeah, it was a, back in those days. It was brilliant to see Essendon up and about. So I was yeah. alive for then. That's sharp work from Jackie there, but um, yeah. I wasn't alive either. So um, uh, we always love to uh, bring up Essendon's finals. So yeah. thanks yeah. for that. That's quite. Uh, cool. Any more questions? No, that's gonna um, cap us off for the day. Um, Alrighty. Remember to follow the Instagram, and every every week we'll be uh, putting out our next guest and um, behind the scenes action from the show. So. If you want to get around that, bit of exclusive um, content too. Yeah. Might be coming soon on the Instagram. Yeah, so, you'd, yeah, you'd want to get around it. It's in your absolute best interest. Alrighty, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. The man, the myth, the legend, the Bev Show is joining us live. We're gonna admit him into the room. <laughs> you got him on the way. Uh, no. he'll be joining. Oh shit! In just a moment. Sure, sure. Yeah. And here he is, here Jacob Bevis. Bev, the host of the Bev Show, welcome to the Interchange Court, and how are you, my friend? Hi, guys. Yes, good, thank you. And uh, if you could just remove that Saints scarf, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all we've got time for. That was. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, funny you should say about that because we'll talk, our talk first leading topic is going to have to be the big game that uh, that uh, both teams will be playing Sunday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, I should say. Uh, Saints and Doggies. What, what are your thoughts on the Doggies, the game? Who, who, obviously, you've uh, been back in the Doggies, but what are your thoughts on the game? Yeah. Should be a good game. It's probably the... Oh, 
probably one of the oh, – There's, I think all the games are going to be good, I suppose, but um, it's definitely going to be an even game. It's definitely the best of the elimination finals, that's for sure. And I think two relatively even teams. Uh, Dogs have won their last three coming into this. I'm, I'm feeling good as a doggy supporter. I think we're a chance, and uh, but obviously can't underestimate the Saints. We've had a really good um, – season this season um they've only won two of their last five coming into this but they've definitely improved this season and and um beaten teams like you know Port Adelaide they weren't far off Brisbane so it's going to be a, a hard task for the dogs but I, I'm feeling good about it I'm feeling like we're we're a chance so um yeah looking forward to it on Saturday the turning point for the Bulldogs to get up what's going to what are they going to need to bring probably just their quick game style um I think Defensively, they're going to have to be strong as well. Um, sometimes they can sort of transition from 50 to 50, but then sort of um, leave themselves uh, vulnerable um, when, you know, teams, the Saints can can play that way potentially. So that could leave us a bit vulnerable in defence if we're not careful. But, um, yeah, I think if we could just play the way we have in the last three three games, it's been really good the way we've played the last three games, especially the second half against the Dockers. So if we can play that way, I think we... We might be able to get on top of the Saints, but obviously the, the Saints are going to be going to be. It's their first final series since 2011, so they're going to be hard to beat, I'm sure. Yeah, they sure are up and about, and I think both teams play a very, very uh, similar game style. So it'll be very interesting yep. to see how that are. Uh, They'll both threaten goes. if um, whoever gets up this week. It's going to be. Um, they are the dark horses to push on in finals, take out a few teams, I reckon. Yeah, they sure are. I think they'll take a bit of uh, a bit of inspiration from the Bulldogs 2016 run. Hopefully. But, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see it more than anyone, but uh, <laughs> it will be, it, yeah, it'll be good to see. Uh, yeah, moving on from footy. No, just uh, quickly on the footy, um, it was good to see Caleb Daniel got his uh, inaugural blazer for the All-Australian. So a few, a few of the Bulldogs did, in fact, the list. So what are your thoughts on the players and um, who are you backing in to really make, make the run this finals campaign and really show their true colours? Well, I think our, our best... Um, we're we're really dominant in the midfield, I think. So the McRae's and Bond and Pelly's and and Smith as well, who's gone to a whole new level this season. They're going to be important. Hunter as well. I think Hunter's the most important player in the team. When he's in the team, I think the dogs are playing better. So um, you know him being you know back from from his little break has been definitely a crucial part of the dogs. You know having this good lead in this good run into the finals. So I think you know that's going to be the the sort of the key area, I think, if we can get on top from that perspective, then we definitely give ourselves a good chance. Obviously, you know, Keith and Cordy, they're going to be key up in defence. And even English as well, he he's probably still needs to improve his rucking, but he can definitely go back and, and play a role in defence and, and vice versa up in the forward line as well. So, um, uh, yeah, I think our midfield is, is going to be... Um, the key and, and Caleb Daniel, he's, you know, been fantastic this season running off half back. He, you know, that game against the Hawks a, a few weeks ago was absolutely superb. And that was probably yeah. uh, sort of the main factor as, as to how he got into the all Australian uh, team, to be honest, but he's had a very good season. So he's going to be crucial running off that half back line, hoping that we can get some revenge over the Saints because definitely in recent times in the finals, they've had a, had an edge over us, in particular 09 and 10, when uh, when we just, especially 09, when we narrowly lost to them. So hopefully we can get some sort of revenge this week. Yeah, fond memories they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh no, not for me. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll move we'll move on from footy, and we can't help but notice uh, on some of your social medias and, on the back end and right in there. the background your, your passion for the Hobart Hurricanes. Um, can you just talk us through because. Big Bash, it's, it's kind of a league. It's, it's not something people follow as passionately as footy, but you seem to have taken the supporting of the Big Bash up a notch. Can you just explain how uh, you've, you've become such a passionate fan of the Hobart Hurricanes? Well, I guess um, it's the only club that I've been following from day dot. And when I say day dot, I've, I've been there since its establishment. Um, you know, the BBL's not relatively old. It, it only started in, I think it was 2011, around about that time. So I've sort of been there since the beginning. And I think that's where the connection comes from and, and why I'm so passionate about it. Also, as well, it's a Tasmanian team. I can go to the games and, and go to all of them and, and, and be involved. Whereas the dogs, I'm, I'm really passionate about the Western Bulldogs, but I can't be there all the time, even when they are playing in Melbourne. So I think that's where the, the big passion comes from. I love the Big Bash concept. It's it's really taken off, maybe dropped in the last couple of seasons with them trying to uh, stretch it out a little bit too long. But, um, and, and also as well, it's just such a great atmosphere at, at Blundstone Arena. It, it really 
gets your heart rate up. It really makes you sort of, um, in, uh, I guess, pumped up where, with the amount of people and the amount of sound that's um, made at, at Blundstone, especially on the hill. You see all these people, you know, packed on the hill watching the Big Bash. So, yeah, I think that's, you know, why I sort of support them so passionately is that I've been there since the beginning and, and, and been there right through. And, and I think I've, I think I've only missed maybe one home game. I think in the entire, uh, in the entire um, uh, entirety of, of the of the yeah. big bash. So um, yeah, yeah, that's probably where it comes from. And, and heading into this season, you've uh, you've nicked one of the stars, one of the stars, better batsman, mm-hmm. Peter Hanson. Yep. You're looking, your, your list is looking strong. You've you've got a few, kept a few nice players. So what are your predictions for uh, this? How this season will go? Yeah, hopefully we can improve on last season. I think um, I think last season it looked like we weren't going to make the finals, and then we just snuck in there and then and then lost to the Thunder. I think Peter Hanscom's a great uh, pickup. I think with George Bailey going out of the team, he can sort of be that sort of man in the middle that can sort of steady things when we're potentially on a collapse. Um, you know, he's probably not a big hitter or, or or so on and so forth, but you probably don't need to be when you're uh, sort of coming in in the middle order. So. Um, I'm sure he'll he'll play his role. I love how they've re-signed Ellis and, and Wright. They were key, um, uh, I guess, men of, of last season, in particular Ellis. But Mac Wright, the you know the games he he played, he was sensational. He definitely has a future. So um, I'm hoping they can they can go deep and and make the finals. We still haven't won a, a flag yet, so hopefully no, this okay. season is the season. We've we've come ever so close. I was the last final we played against the Strikers at the Adelaide Oval. That was probably our chance, but we, we couldn't quite um, uh, couldn't quite hold them in their uh, in their batting innings uh, when they started. And so uh, yeah, hopefully um, hopefully this season's the season. Fingers crossed. Yeah, well we wish them all the best, and uh, we'll be we'll be we'll be we'll be actually supporting the stars. So uh, all the best to the Cats. <laughs> yes, yep. but, uh, we'll be on the stars bandwagon. Uh, so Renegades. Except Harry's on the Renegades. <laughs> Some good matchups this year for sure. Good games. Yeah, should be. Yep. Hopefully, it can all go ahead smoothly as well. Obviously, uh, with yeah. you know everything that's going on. Um, you think like when the Renegades won a couple of years ago, they had one of the worst lists I've ever seen, <laughs> and they still managed to pull it out. So it's just just like the luck of the draw. I feel like. And they start, and the stars literally handed it to the to them on the plate. Yeah, they really <laughs> absolutely <laughs> unbelievable that day. That final it was oh, yeah. incredible. We'll, we'll move on from cricket. We're going to get into your um your life a bit. Um, obviously, um. Completed uni, I think, with of media a few like this year or a year before. Um, also like yep, last year and stuff. Um, what have you been doing with yourself over isolation and um, just in general with work and stuff like that? Well, actually, um, the start of the year, um, uh, signed on for a role at a uh, a bike team in Melbourne, informed team yeah. inside Megan. I was going to go away with them uh, when they. Uh, uh, raced in the National Road Series, but that hasn't quite gone to plan. Still doing some stuff with them, but uh, I can't go away with them because there's no races, unfortunately, with COVID, um, which is which is sad because that was that was going to be really cool and to be involved uh, with them uh, this season from that aspect. But unfortunately, uh, not not to be this season. Um, so uh, luckily, uh, we've got a footy season uh, up up and running. We're coming into finals now, so I've been umpiring uh, this season, which is good. That's that's been going ahead, which is, you know, didn't look likely at the start of the season, but it's, it's great that we've got that back up and running. So I've been doing that, trying to sort of uh, work on my platform as well, I guess, you know, during this time we've, you know, we've seen a lot of, you know, media companies cut jobs and so on and so forth. And the opportunities I feel are getting sort of less and less. Um, so I guess my, I guess I have a bit of an advantage in a way that I have my own platform and uh, that people watch and enjoy. So I've just been trying to, um, you know, improve that as well and, and try and do things on that as, as well. So that's basically what I've been doing this season, umpiring lately and, and the Bev show and, and um, yeah, yeah, trying to make the most of what I have, I suppose. With, the, with of course, the Bev show, um, your famous, uh, one of the most famous Facebook shows out there yeah. <laughs> um, every Sunday night. How did you get started with that? Obviously, I can't remember when it started. So Obviously, it was a while. Right? Yeah, quite a few years ago now. Um, how has it progressed and how did you get started in it? Well, I actually started the idea the day after the grand final, actually, the dog's grand final, <laughs> believe it or not. I just I just flicked on on my own personal um, profile, just a live stream with my, you know, dog's gear on. And that's how the, the concept of the live stream started. And then I ended up creating the page, creating the, the Bev show name and, 
and it went from there really. And, and, um, you know, 2017, that was probably the first full year I did it. And, you know, we had, I think we had Ollie Wines tune in. So that was pretty cool to, to, to get that in, in the first year. And I, I guess the, the good thing with Facebook is that people, um, share, you know, it's very easy to share things and, 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 you know, people can see what sometimes people can see what they like and so on and so forth. It shows up in their newsfeed. And then 2018, the, the, I did the hurricane stuff. And so that sort of, um, uh, sort of I guess gave me more new viewers going into another season of the Bev show and then it's I've been lucky it's it's actually kept um thriving I guess this this season even though we had a period there with no sport it's probably been one of the most um high viewed um years of of the Bev show um in its in its history and, and it's in its fourth season so I've been pretty lucky in that aspect and and like I said the you know the Facebook aspect of sharing and stuff that and tagging as well definitely helps um get that across so um yeah very uh, very lucky I, I suppose that people keep tuning in on a sunday night to uh to, to hear what, what i have to say and hear mm. the rubbish that comes out of my mouth i suppose <laughs> sometimes the um the uh talk shows and podcasts and all that um youtube and all the media platforms are really taking off in 2020 with um yeah home and stuff like that um it's really um created a market for it um Season. absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah it's, it's it's good podcasting i mean to you know you don't even have to have a lot of equipment to, to do it you know you don't even have to have a camera to be honest and yeah, yeah. and yet you know people yeah people can just you know flick yeah. the microphone on start talking and 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 it you know it can yeah. it can be a big thing yeah, yeah. actually from our uh, ping pong table so yeah. <laughs> that's well there you go yeah uh, yeah i used to do my show from the bed so uh <laughs> so yeah with a with a green screen in the background so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's um you don't have to have a lot of equipment that's for sure yeah. and on the bev, uh, bev show i think it would be stupid to not ask you about some of your iconic uh segments including angry bev uh, yep heroes there's there's a, there's, 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 there's so many stuff. now what takes our fancy is the uh the angry bev segment and in in uh in specific we're going to touch on um the Meatball Sub, Angry Bev, the Cricket Australia, Angry Bev, and the, uh, I think, I think you dressed up as a Teletubby once. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Chef. Can you just start us off with the Meatball Sub? And just, you seem to be a very passionate man. And can you just talk us through yeah, what yeah. gets you up and about for these Angry Bev segments? Well, I guess um, with that segment is I try to um, I try to talk about something that I'm passionate about. Now, I'm not really sure if I'm that passionate about a meatball <laughs> sub, but that, that day I, I wanted a meatball sub and I walked in the subway and they didn't have any. And then I came away with a silly old pizza sub, didn't even toast it or anything. So it was basically disgusting, to be honest. No, I um, and, you know, Subway, I, you know, I just want a meatball sub from Subway. Any of the other subs are pretty irrelevant to me. So, so I guess I was passionate about that at the time. And, and, um, and but yeah, no, Angry Bev's, you know, I, I try to base it on things that I'm really passionate about. So, you know, Cricket Australia, for example, you know, Hurricane WBBL game. So I think it was, is that the one you're talking about? The 11 o'clock yeah, I think when you, game. Yeah. Last yeah, year, um, yeah, it was a bit silly, to be honest. I mean, you know, if you want the WPBL to thrive and you want people to see it, I mean, you know, hosting a, a game at 11 o'clock on a, sc on a school day is probably not the way to go about it. So, you know, it's, it's probably similar to, you know, Caro's Arrow and segments like that, you know, and, and, and just trying to get, I guess, a point across and, and really go hard at something that grind my gears, but something I'm really passionate about. So yeah. um, that that's the aim of the, the Angry Bev, although it's probably turned into more of a, me sort of, um, yeah, making a loud racket and and, yeah. and so on and so forth. But if it can be entertaining and, and um, informative yeah. at the same time, then I'm happy. It sure is entertaining. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you that. Uh, yeah, obviously the last thing we'll talk about is the future with you and the Bev show and just in the media in general, what um, you want to do in the future. Mm. Yeah, good question. Um, com commentary is my sort of dream. Um, I want to be at the MCG or, or something like that, commentating footy or um, you know, or, or other sports that I like as well. Potentially cricket or or even racing. I'm I'm happy to give racing a go. It's a hard job being a race caller, but I, I would give it a go for sure. And so that that's probably the dream. Not not sure how far away that is. I feel like I'm sort of a while away from from that. Yet I, yet I'm only 23, so so still got you know plenty of time. And it, you know it is a big caper to get in especially when you've got you know some you know big guns still in the industry already so that's the dream um for the meantime um i'm you know pretty keen to press on with what i've got um uh you know if i can pick up a media opportunity you know at, at 
some point that would be sort of great as well, perhaps in the sort of journalism industry, you know, news or even, you know, sports side of things, preferably. Um, yeah, we'll just have to, we'll just have to see, but for the, you know, obviously COVID's uh, really put a spanner in the works, that's for sure, especially in the media industry. I feel like it's sort of um, the opportunities are getting lesser and lesser now with, um, you know, what's happened during COVID. But yeah, for the moment, just happy to sort of press on with, um, with uh, yeah, the Bev show. And, and if, you know, anything else pops up, I'm happy to, you know, apply and, and, uh, and see what happens. But yeah, commentary and sports broadcasting is the, the ultimate, the ultimate goal. I really enjoyed your um your uh, commentary in the Australian Duck League yeah. the COVID period. That was um yep. well maybe not the biggest break. It was it was very, it was very entertaining. Actually, it was fun, yeah. It was yeah. interesting. The Gold Coast Suns got up. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. It was something different. It was something different. Yeah, it was something different during that time. I I didn't. I only commentated. I, I mean, the the people who come to me and actually put it together, and then Sportsbet got involved, which was even. <laughs> Which was even more amazing, which meant it was you know going to a higher audience, which because they you know they have a you know big audience there at Sportsbet. So yeah, it was it was pretty fun. It was it was quite thrilling to be sort of the the uh, the the official caller of a of a sport, if you could even call it a sport. But it was really fun, especially during that time when there was no footy. It was something different, wacky, and and um, and fun. And they even put together fake markets. It was yeah, it was good. So I hope, I hope it comes back in the future and we can do it again. But um, definitely be but something. no. Autobiography here. Australian <laughs> Duck League to the NCG commentary. Could even include it as a title. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, well, I think that probably concludes. Uh, we, we, we have to leave by giving you a, a yippity dippity do. <laughs> it's just one of your famous catchphrases. Um, yeah, I think that's probably all we've got time for. Uh, we've loved having you on the show and we, uh, we've loved uh, yeah, speaking to you and hearing, yeah, getting insights into uh, just your day to day life. Uh, I'd wish the Bulldogs good luck, but um, I'm a Saints fan, so uh, I hope you lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to wish you good luck, but I don't know if I'll bomb it now. <laughs> uh, uh, nah, fair should, enough. Should be, should, should be a good game, uh, no matter yep. the result. Yeah, uh, I don't mind the doggies. I'd rather lose to doggies than like a Pies or an Essendon. Yep. It, that is it. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it should uh, be a good game. I, yeah. I don't think it'll be a blowout or anything. It'll be a, a bloody good game, that's for sure. Looking Hopefully forward to it. Game, uh, yeah, so take care and uh, all the best in your uh, future. Cheers for coming on. Yeah. Thank you. All the best. Oh, alrighty. Well, was that a good 20 minutes or what? Jeez. That was a leap. I mean, you know, we're really up in the, the market for you guys, the listeners. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, we, we, should, we should start to... We, 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 the guests are getting bigger and bigger. So and uh, next week, um, we got a big name coming on. Um, ooh, let's just say... Do um, we? <laughs> big, yeah. Damn. So got, big, so, uh, yeah. So you gotta you gotta be following the Instagram. You have gotta be ready every Friday night at seven pm. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So with that being said, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I think oh. <laughs> we've only got two Rectana cans. Oh, oh, so yeah, remember to subscribe. Remember to buy your Great Australian Squeeze in your Woolworths stores for six bucks in the refrigerated aisle. And uh, with that being said, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Oh, I've <laughs> <laughs>